Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. I thought I'd start this video uh, over on our west side. The sun's uh, fixing to set, so we've got a lot of shadows and I wanted to get out of all the shadows. But uh, this is our west trail and a lot of the videos you see of the deer and game and wildlife are from this trail right here. So uh, me and my daughter, Aubrey, we call this the Sasquatch tree because it uh, looks like a Sasquatch grabbed this sucker and uh, bent it down. But actually, what that's from is a ice storm did that. But uh, we just kind of leave it there. It's kind of funny. That's a Sasquatch tree. So let's head down this trail and I'll show you uh, where I have my game camera set. Uh, I got a shot of some deer running through here and jumping over logs and stuff. And I caught them on three cameras and kind of sequenced it together. And uh, it turned out pretty cool and I got a lot of good comments about that. So I'll show you where the cameras are at and show you how they're set up and then I'll show you that uh, sequence here at the end. All right, so we'll head here under the Sasquatch tree. So here's our TP and it's crashed so one of the logs that was leaned up in there that was one of the supports for it uh i guess it rotted out and it's fell in but uh kids had a lot of fun with that we need to uh do some work on it put another pole in there and get that fixed so uh the deer came from this direction and headed through this trail and here's our first game camera and there's the battery pack for it so they ran by here that's camera four back there and they came at this log and those folks of you that watch my videos a lot know that this is the log where i get like raccoons bobcats possums fox and the deer come up in here too and there's a squirrel likes to hang out on this log so this the other camera is right here and this is one of my newer cameras this is a browning Recon Force Advantage. So it shoots uh, 1080p, 60 frames a second. And uh, I saw the deer on this first. The deer was like probably right in here, about this high off the ground. And I caught it on that, that camera kicked on that fast to catch that. That's fast for a game camera. Normally they wouldn't have caught it. So there were three deer and it caught the very first one midair and, uh, and it caught the other two coming on by. So then they headed down this trail To the next camera here's our salt block and the next camera's right here so they came from this direction and ran right through here and this camera didn't kick on fast enough it only caught the uh the second and the third deer running through there i just barely caught the butt of the first one like right over here in the frame when it kicked on so this camera here is not near as fast as those others so that's that's how i put that together so now i'll show you a clip of the three shots together and how they look Thank you. 
Okay, that was the deer running through the woods. Hope you like that. So, uh, I'll show you the rest of this trail and we'll head on out of the woods and uh, run up by the compost and check out the chickens and the garden and all of that. And we'll see what's going on up there. There's a uh, running water right there. And there's the pond. It's been dry for quite a while. We've had a few rains, but not any with very much runoff. So uh, on the composting front, I uh, haven't added anything yet this month. So this here is all garden waste and chicken manure. This is like a two year old compost with dirt with leaf litter. And uh, this is like household paper stuff in compostable trash bags. So what we do have, I'm gonna add, I was waiting for it to dry up enough so I could get my tractor in there, is uh, we have a bunch of bags of leaves from my parents. I went up there and got them from them. And this is all pecan tree leaves. So we'll add those on there. Probably what I'll do is I'll scrape away the garden compost and scoot it back a little bit, dump the leaves in and then put that on top of it. So we'll have some good uh, leaf mold in there uh, mixed in with that. Okay, so let's uh, check on the garden. So uh, last update in November, all the winter crops were sprouting out good and uh, coming up good under these little tunnels. But since then, we had a really hard freeze uh, not too long after I planted them. And these little seedlings in here, uh, it was just too cold for them, so it killed them all out. So there is nothing growing in here now. It got down to 16 degrees uh, for two days straight. There's a little bit of green right there, but I don't think that's anything I planted. It may be. Uh, here's some here. I think that's just native uh, weeds and stuff. We'll see. Let's uh, look under these little tunnels and see how they're doing. Okay, so you can see we got some green stuff in here. So uh, when that northerly hit, the wind was blowing 50 miles an hour uh, out of the north this direction. And this plastic actually got out of there and flopped over. And it was before it got down to uh, below freezing too much, I caught it. And uh, I was able to lay some big bricks on here and get it weighted down so it wouldn't uh it would stay on there so this one was flopped over clear that way but yeah it was it was crazy windy it blew over the outhouse for the uh, construction workers so yeah it was crazy so i think uh i can't remember what we all we have in here but the actual crops is this line here this stuff up here i think it's just uh weeds but uh so the stuff in here is still growing. So I think this is spinach and this is a variety of lettuce. I think this was muscalin here. But uh, let's take a look inside the other one real quick and then we'll water these. Yeah, so this side here is doing pretty good too. So after that cold spell, it, uh, it didn't look too good, but uh, at least the things in here survived. It never did start uh, germinate very well down on that end. I don't know why, even before the, the freeze hit. So let's uh, get these watered and covered back up. So I had my nice watering wand. I left it hooked to the end of the hose. 
and uh, the hose was unhooked from the hydrant so it wouldn't freeze but I left that wand on there and it split it right at the end because it froze so I got to get me a new one of those And we didn't get the celery harvested, so Ryan at a little dirt never hurt said, "Go ahead and harvest it." And that's when it looked really nice and green. So uh, it's uh, got some green on it, but I, it's it's not any good right now. So and there's a few green sprouts in here, but I don't think it's anything I planted. So this was all planted. It was all sprouting and coming up nice. But that 16 degree weather was just too much for those little fragile plants. If they were a little bigger, they probably would have survived. I didn't get them planted in time. I should have planted them probably three or four weeks before we did. So let's uh, go check on the chickens. So in here inside the cold frame, it's uh, doing good too. This uh, comfrey has been hanging on. Uh, most of the other country outside, uh, there's a few green sprouts on it, but uh, it's pretty much died off. So, get some of these lower leaves down here for the chickens. Yeah, they're excited. They know what's coming. <laughs> well, they made pretty short work of that comfrey. Let's uh, go see how many eggs we've got. Should have quite a few because we didn't get eggs last night. So uh, my sister-in-law was throwing out all these pumpkins and uh, so I got them from her and uh, they've been working on these. That one's about done. Got another one over here we'll cut up here in a second. So this is two days worth of eggs. Whoa. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. So six and a half eggs a day. That's not bad for this time of year. They slow down in the winter months. So this is their normal laying pellets right here. So this is 28% uh, protein, 16% protein. Got their heated water going on uh, for when it freezes. I haven't needed it a whole lot, except for just a few days. <coughs> so I keep this uh, scoop over this handle because this handle leaks. That keeps the water out of there. And we use metal container because that keeps the rats and mice out of there. I said a mouse trap. Let's see if we got one over here. Yeah, right there's our mouse. One of them anyway. We'll reset that here after a while.
Okay, quick little update on the beehives. Everything seems to be going well. Uh, it got up to about 55 degrees today and I did see a few bees flying around. Well, these bees in this nuke are flying. So we got our two little nukes uh, wrapped up. Got them some uh, little bit of insulation there and some black tar paper to help keep them warm. See how that sun's hitting that dark? So that's going to help keep this little hive warm. So they're actually pretty active today, still. I don't want to get too close to that fence because it's on. Uh, this fence here is to keep skunks away from the entrance because skunks will uh, get the bees and eat them and chew them up into little balls and spit them out. And I call those skunk plugs. So this little nuke here is a little bit active too. So that's our two little nukes. Uh, a nuke is just a five frame uh, hive. So these big boxes, they have 10 frames in each one of the box. So that's a 20 frame or what I call a double deep. And this is a nuke, which is short for nucleus colony. And it has five frames in it. And there's not a whole lot of bees in there. It's a small hive. And uh, both of these nukes have been combined from two different sets of hives. So someone was asking me if this uh, electric fence will kill the bees and shock them. So there's one right there just landed on it. And he's doing fine. So they have to touch the ground and the fence at the same time to get shocked. So it doesn't hurt them at all. But uh, it'll sure hurt a skunk. It'll knock the fire out of them. So yeah, there's a few bees flying around here. There's some up in there. I might need to check that. That might be some robbing going on on that top entrance there. Here's our controller here on the battery. So every time that flashes, means it's kicking on so this row of hives here is a lot newer than the others they haven't been established as long all right that's it for the beehives let's uh, finish this uh, video up with a tour of the house construction and show you what's going on with that So here's the inside of the house. I think I'll show you around here real quick what's going on. So uh, everything is framed in now. So they're ready to start running electrical. And they're going to start that this week. So right here is the uh, kitchen area. Kitchen sink's going to go right here in front of this window. That'll be the view outside there and they still need to put this window here in and this is where we're going to eat most of the time probably and this is a big sliding door is going to go right here it's going to have four four foot sections across and it'll open and slide both ways from the middle uh, this here is the fireplace uh, it's not going to be a wood burning fireplace it's going to be gas on this end it's just two bedrooms so there's a restroom here between uh, this bedroom looking this way 
and this bedroom here looking out this direction so uh, right here is Maggie and this is gonna be my new office and also I might set it up to where it's kind of like a YouTube studio I don't know we'll see how that goes and here's the stairs headed up and then they hang a bend that way so to get to our master bedroom we come in here this hallway goes outside and there will be a <coughs> bench right here so this is kind of a mudroom area and this will be a bathroom off of that and there goes Buck walking through the walls and this is the laundry room utility room so we're gonna have a a water manifold right here for the hot and the cold and the washer dryer will go here there's also going to be a sink in here uh, right there so this connects to our master closet so the dogs are in the master closet there so the laundry room connects to the master closet and then off the master closet this direction is all of our bathroom this will be a tub shower and toilet and then off of this bathroom is the master bedroom so it's a big circle the way this this all joins up so to get to the closet you either have to go through the utility room or through the master bedroom or bathroom and this is the master bedroom here <coughs> and we still need this window put in so the beehives are right there I don't know if you can see them with this wide angle lens but uh, that's our view that we're gonna have so we'll walk upstairs real quick so upstairs is basically just a big open room and this room is not much smaller than what we live in right now we're living in 600 square feet and this is uh, just over 500 so we've got the dormers here so it's a pretty view there so uh, instead of shooting sunsets with my drone I might be able to come up here and do that the time lapses <coughs> so we've got two of these dormers this is looking west so we have a big closet right here so this will be for storing like Christmas things like that and then there's a door right here off of this room that's going to go into the attic So this is all going to be covered up in sheetrock. And we're talking about having this decked over to that window. So that's an operating window. It goes up and down. So if we ever wanted to open that, we want the decking to go over there. And this here's above the garage. and then to go into the garage it's right here off this little hallway <sighs> you guys <laughs> so we just have a double car garage and that's mainly because <coughs> <laughs> we have this big barn down here and we can get vehicles in that if we need to and there's plenty of storage in that we even have mezzanines built in that so that's kind of it's two-story even parts of that so 
Did you tell him who's boss? Huh? Those two play constantly if you let them. <laughs> so you probably couldn't see very well from the drone video, but the back porch is pretty good sized. So this is all going this is all covered porch right here. We had planned for it to end right there, but that second story room was bigger than they anticipated, so they had to add this little extra pitch to the roof, and that built on this little section right here. So we weren't planning on having that, but there it is. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed the video. House coming along good. Uh, they're projecting we'll move in, uh, I think in March. So the inside takes a little bit longer to, to do all of that. So uh, I'm kicking around the idea of doing a uh, 2019 highlights video. So that'll probably be coming next, uh, later on into December. Hope everyone has a uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Uh, meanwhile, uh, if you haven't subscribed, I appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're over 4,000 now. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you would. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.